Hello and welcome back to the second part showing how to convert a website into a PWA. Before I left part 1, I added the two links to my other pages. These are the links to the manifest and to register the service worker. As a side note, how I wish I had a site based on a template or a site containing a single page app. That would have saved me having to go to the individual pages. When I view the page in the browser's developer panel I see our service worker in action. We also see an error message. Don't worry about this error, it is specific to a Chrome extension. If the page is opened in a Chrome incognito window, the error does not show. The static cache shows the site route as expected. The dynamic cache shows 15 other resources. This is also as expected. What I want to do now, is to populate the static cache with the resources that show in the dynamic cache. But I know that there are more than 15 resources. Let's change the limit in the service worker file. I think that 100 should do the trick. Back in the browser I refresh the page. But I see no change in the number of resources. To see why, I go to the service worker and see that the modified service worker is waiting to be activated. There are three ways to activate the waiting service worker. The first is to close the browser and reload the page. The second method is to click on, skip waiting. The third way is to tick the box, update on reload. This third method is the preferred method while developing the site. The rest of this video will be based on that preference unless stated otherwise. When I reload the page, we see that the modified service worker has been activated. We also see that the number of resources in the dynamic cache has increased to 19 entries. What I now want to do is to add these resources to the static cache. Unfortunately, there currently no easy way to do this. I have developed a method. Hopefully someone else can come up with a quicker method. Please leave your comments below. Here goes. Copy the resources as shown in the dynamic cache. Paste these into Notepad. Open Wappler and minimize the code window. The idea is to paste the resources from Notepad into the service worker. The assets constant is an array. Protocol dictates that elements inside an array be separated by a comma. Hence I place a comma after the first element in the array. In the next line I add a single quotation mark. The editor adds a closing quotation mark. I then add the separating comma. I then copy this line and paste it a number of times which is the equivalent of the number of resources. Oops! I now notice that I placed a dot instead of a comma after the single quotes. To save me having to re-record the section, I will rectify this later on. I copy the first item in Notepad and paste it into the service worker. This is repeated for each of the following items. I hope that you are keeping up. This is by far the most tedious activity when creating a PWA and I would hate to repeat it. When done, don't forget to remove the last comma. I also close Notepad. We no longer need it. When I look at the last four entries, I see that there is a portion of the link that is missing. To verify this, I go to the Application tab and hover over those entries. And yes, the URL to the site is missing. I will now go ahead and add the missing parts to the items. Yes I have noticed that I have missed a dot in line 21. I will rectify this outside of this video and before I test the service worker in the browser. When I reload the page in the browser, I see that there is no change in the dynamic cache. Yet the assets have been added to the status cache. To explain. When I modified the contents of the service worker by changing 15 to 100, a new service worker was activated when I reloaded the page. This is because I enabled, update on reload. I also previously explained that the static cache is populated when the service worker is activated. And that the dynamic cache is populated on a fetch event. The static cache will accept new items without shedding existing items. The dynamic cache will accept new items while shedding items that exceed the stipulated maximum number of items. 
So how do we get rid of the items that are currently duplicated in the dynamic cache? We go back into the service worker file and change that version. Save the file. In the browser, we reload the page. We now see that the old versions of the cache are deleted. And the new versions are populated. Before I test the progressive web app, I want to change the number of allowed items in the dynamic cache. Back to 15. In the browser, I go offline. I choose the about page. All I see is the unfriendly, this site can't be reached message. This is not what I want to see. I want to see the fallback page. If I go to the static cache, I do not see the fallback page listed. To fix this, I go back to the service worker. Here I add the fallback page to the assets. To have the static cache updated, I need to go online and refresh the page. We now see that the fallback page has been added to the static cache. Back offline, we now see a much more pleasing message. I go through a number of other tests while sparing you my voice as much as possible. I can't resist. I have to say that the dynamic cache now includes the contact page. I also see that a favicon has been added. This is because I added the favicon outside of this video. Normally the favicon would be added to the static cache. I'll leave that up to you to include, using the knowledge gained so far. When I go to the network tab, we see that the service worker has populated the page. This also happens when the site is online. That is the power of a PWA, it is fast, reliable and secure. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the two-part tutorial. My name is Ben Pleasier.